So in order to take the head off of this 1.8T engine, it, we have to take off a few of the pieces first. You can see we have the intake manifold removed, we have the exhaust manifold removed, and the air box as well, and a few of the other just hoses and things that were in the way. So now we have access to all the head bolts. And you can't just go taking off all the head bolts. You have to take them off, take them off in reverse order of how you would tighten them. You can just go online and find this sheet. It gives you the tightening order. You can also find their loosen order. It's just the exact opposite of this. So in this case, when we're loosening them, we'd start with 10, go to 9, go to 8, go to 7, go to 6, go to 5, go to 4, go to 3, go to 2, go to 1. So that's how we're going to loosen them. And we can go ahead and start to, but make sure that you have this oriented correctly. So the engine is just like this. That's your timing cover right there. And you want to make sure you're doing this right because that would be a shame, but I know it is because right here is one of the pieces that secures the camshaft on. Here's another piece, here's another piece, but then this side has these bigger pieces. We know that's correct. I can see those three bolts are those three bolts. So this is in the correct orientation. So let's go ahead and start with number 10, which is right there. And whenever we're putting these on, we'll put that in and then just tap this. Cause these are on here very tight. You don't want to strip one of these out. If you strip one of these out, I'm not even sure how you would get it out the rest of the way. Tap, tap, tap. So in order to remove the head bolts, we also have these, these are kind of a specialty Torx bolt. Let me show you the set. Here's the, uh, we found them online. That was the only place we could find them. They're very long. These head bolts are kind of in there deep, so they're hard to get to. You need the long ones. Now we have the 3 8 breaker bar attached to it. We may need to get a cheater, but let's go ahead and try to break this loose. Yep, I can feel it moving. It's good. So actually, instead of taking that bolt out the whole way, I'm gonna leave it right there, which is just a little bit tight. I just broke it loose because I don't want this to warp at all. So we're going to continue with this order because if I take this all the way out, there's gonna be nothing pushing down. And I think just having a little bit of tension there is fine. So I'm going to try to break this loose. Since we tapped it on there, it's gonna be a little tricky to get it off but it's very important you tap it on. And now let's go ahead and move to number nine, which is right here. Tap, tap, tap. Down. So let's go ahead and take this one off as well. Nice. Okay, move to number eight, which is right here. There we go. Nice. Here's number seven. We're gonna go ahead and break this loose. Nice. Here's number five. Here's number four. Number three. Number two. And now for number one, I have this tapped on and let's go ahead and break the last one loose. And I'm putting my hand here and pushing down. You wanna make sure that this is not gonna be able to come up and weaken it and just strip the head out. So we're pushing down and we're pushing to break it loose. And there it goes, nice and loose. There we so go. So these bolts are one-time use. They stretch whenever you tighten them. So every time you take them out, you have to put new ones in. This torque has to be very precise. So now we're going to just take these out the rest of the way with a ratchet because they're not too tight anymore. And that actually is real loose. I can just take it out with my hand and then we'll take these out in reverse order. So now we can pull this out and you can see there's the first head bolt. So when you're taking these out and breaking them loose, I would highly recommend not using an impact hammer. I use that on a lot of parts around the car but on this, you need to be able to feel the bolt, feel if it's stripping. With an impact hammer, it might just have too much power. 
whoops, and it'll just strip it, strip it out. And if that strips, you're gonna have just a terrible time trying to get the head out. Imagine trying to drill that bolt out and maybe getting an extractor in there. I don't know how you would do that, but it would be a big problem and you won't have fun trying to get that out. You just keep pulling these heads, head bolts off in reverse order. There we go. That was number six. So these special torques here, we really only use these in situations where you need the long reach. Because we want to make these last. We don't want them just to be used on a bunch of suspension bolts and get worn out. And then when we need them for head bolts, we can't use them. So these we only use for the applications where we can't use anything else. Harbor Freight sells a high impact set that's a little shorter that we use for just about everything. And then these work great for the long reach situations. And now for the last bolt, we can go ahead and loosen this up and pull it out. There we go. So now the whole entire head should be free. I should actually be able to move it around a little bit. Yeah, see? So now let's go ahead and take the head off. It's very loose. Remember this thing is pretty heavy, so we're gonna take this off. It's just a few, it's not being held on by anything. It's just a few things that are close enough by it that it makes it tricky to get off. You know, actually there's one bolt back here we need to take off. It's connecting it to, looks like part of this piece right here. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts on the back of this plastic cooling box. We're just gonna loosen these up with a quarter inch ratchet. Now that these two bolts are out, this is free and we can go ahead and take the head bolt out. And I have no idea how I didn't just drop that bolt. So now let's go ahead and try to remove this head. There we go, and it's free. So let's flip this thing over carefully and take a look at those valves. There they are. So if we look at some of these, I think these are the intake valves. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. these are the intake valves and these look like they are bent. If I look right here in the end, right there and there, those two look like they've been hit. There's little marks there. Same right there and there. I don't see anything on those two. And then on this one, I see two hit marks and it does look like they're bent a little bit. But all the exhaust valves here actually look like they're in pretty good shape. I'm not seeing any big hits in them. They actually don't really look bent. 